never get to see the big side. Will I ever get to climb the big high? Will I ever get to play? This is our first real get-together as the Pulaski squad. And on behalf of the Phillies, myself, your manager, Skipper Bob Wren, and the whole Philly family, we want to really sincerely welcome you to Pulaski and your first venture in professional baseball. Starting as of now, your pros. We're going to treat you as pros and treat you as men. Our objective, starting right as of now, is to make baseball players of you and get you ready to move up the ladder in professional baseball and someday in the very near future see in Veterans Stadium playing in the big leagues. Almost all the great names of baseball began their careers in the minor leagues. Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Joe DiMaggio, and Hank Aaron all served time in Bush League ballpark. Today, teams like the Pulaski Phillies remain the first step in pro baseball, the beginning of a long and difficult climb to the majors. The Philadelphia Phillies provide the players for Pulaski's team and pay their salaries as well. Most of the rookies are still teenagers, some are given bonus money when they first sign their contract, but they're all paid the same wage, $400 a month. They come from every part of the United States and from South America, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, all united by the dream of someday playing in the major leagues. Only a few will ever make it. The rest will be left behind. Of all the rookies, the pitchers will receive the most attention. Their job is the most critical in baseball. Every motion of each pitcher will be carefully studied by Pulaski's pitching instructor, Bob Tiefenauer. Tiefenauer pitched nine years in the big leagues, but his special talent now as a coach is not so much his knowledge or experience, but his manner. Wait a minute, somebody go get the mask. Get the mask and put on, bad hands. Bad hands, hell. That damn ball took a bounce. Let me ball just, that's why they're round, so they'll bounce. If you get it a, took a bad bounce. If you get a square one, it just hits and stays there. It don't bounce. That's why they make them round. What do you think a ball's going to do when it hits the ground? Tifanoa not only coaches, but also acts as a trainer, companion, counselor, and spiritual oh, yeah. advisor to each of his oh, yeah. pitchers. Everything in the world is possible, as long as you stay healthy, bust your fanny out there, you got to work at it. There's no shortcut to anything. You have to work. We don't want to take you, you boys just out of high school and say you got to do this, you got to do that. We want to see what you can do on your own natural ability. We're satisfied if you guys can throw a fastball, curveball, and change it and get them over. Our main concern here is for you fellas right now to throw strikes. In the big leagues, is there any pitchers just to, to change up, curveball and fastball? Did you hear that guy they, they call Koufax? Yeah, that's all, that's all he has. That's all he do. That doesn't mean right now that you can't throw like Koufax. You can't throw now like he did when he was pitching the big leagues, but I'm saying that doesn't mean that you, Kevin Saucier, cannot throw like that in, in three, four years. It's going to take work, and you can't walk after the ball, Lefty. <laughs> you got to put out. And you'll find here that you guys might strike people out here in this league because these lights aren't good. The higher you get, the better the lights, the lights are. You guys ever see the lights in Veterans Stadium? It's just like, it's lighter than this. You know, you just, there it is. Just daylight. And the, and the better the lights are, the better the hitters see the ball. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fort Knuckle Field. For tonight's game between the Covington Astros and the Pulaski Phillies. Oh, God! Ah! 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 Ah!
Don't throw yourself out down here now. As long as you know you're good and loose. That's how you pace yourself down here in the pen. And pitching for Pulaski, number 10, Kevin Saucer. Saucer is the pitcher. I don't know, care how that, hey, it don't matter how that guy pronounces your name. Saucer. Maybe he thinks you look flat. That ticks me off. You can't worry about what they call your name. And don't fight yourself out there. All right. You ready? Hell yeah. I'll show them. Good one. Hey, go get them. All right? All right. And if this guy pronounces your name wrong, that's all right. Go out there and tell him. It don't matter what he calls you, just beat him, that's all. All right. You guys hear him uh, pronounce his name? Saucer? Saucer. All right, let's help each other out. Let's go get him. Take your time. Go strike. Come on, something on it now, Kev. That's right, they'll learn his name, won't they? Easy inning. Stick it right in there. Come on. Get the hitter, Kevin. Come on, Smitty, come on. Smitty, you got a shot in, Smitty. Oh. See, that's what happens when you don't keep yelling. Whose ball was it? Wendy's. I got it, I got it, I got it. That never happened. Never. That's Bush. All right, let's go, Kev. Come on, Kev. Go get him now, I got a problem. Those strikes. Get over there. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Got him. Hey, he didn't slide. Hey, see, when you don't slide, even if you're safe, you're out. Right? You don't slide, you're out. No excuse for that in baseball. You don't slide, what? Even if you're safe, you're out. If I'm coaching third, and it's that close. Even if I know you're safe, you don't slide. And I know you're safe, I'm not going to say a word. You're out for not sliding. Come on, Kev. Let's go. Bear down, huh? No, no, see, no, baby. No, no, see, no. Come on. Get over here. First place, get over the ball. Get out. Yeah. That boy, Kev, come on in here. Sit down here. Hey, you did your job, right? All right, all right. That's all you worry about. Just remember, when one of your guys loose the ball, that's when you have to bear down and get the next guy out. You did your job. There's nothing you can do about it, right? Huh? My bat was jumping like heck over here when he was out there. I wanted to hit off you so bad. <laughs> you guys hear my bat jumping over here? Wendy, try to get around on one now. Let's see you hit one. Come on. Catch the ball either. Come on, John, one time. Get through there. Hey, boy. That's the way. Hey. Good. So you take one, get a good pitch, boom. She's having trouble. He's done right now. You see, we got three run lead. Three run lead. Comprendi? See, he's having a little trouble. He's going to let up to get it over. Mm -hmm. And if he sticks that first one in there, jump on it. Right. But you know, don't swing at it unless it's your pitch. Yeah. You know what? Try to lay off it because he's having trouble. Right. But if you get your pitch, get out ahead and pull the hell out of it. Okay? Oh, come on! Hang up! Get out of here! Way to hit the ball. All right, take your time now. Nice and easy. Go strike now. Get out in front. Yeah, that's all right. 
back there. Yeah, he sure looks like he's going to be a fighter, ain't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he's got a lot of guts. Yeah. He's not as silly a goof as we thought originally. He's a, you know, he looks like he wants to win. He could be a sleeper. Yeah, boy. Way ahead now. Yeah, he's a battler. Oh, he's a battler. That's a good sign. Yeah. Look at him, look at him. He's really, look at him. He's a hot dog. Huh? He's looking, he's over looking, he over here looking at the dog out and just wiping the heck out of a ball out there. A handful of, handful of dirt and everything else. With two outs in the last inning, Kevin Saucier is one strike from his first victory as a pro baseball player. Congratulations. Get out there. Good job tonight. That's the way to go, bro. You can get many more in two, you hear? Huh? Nice going, man. Right on, huh? Right on. Nice going, Kev. Good job. Nice going, gang. Help with the equipment. Get your jacket on. You'll sleep tonight. First one. I'm on my way to the bright lights. Ain't that right, bud? No. So strong. For Kevin Saucier, the road that begins in the rookie league may one day lead to Clearwater, Florida. Here in spring training, the Philadelphia Phillies gather the cream of a farm system that consists of teams at each level of minor league baseball. After the rookie league, a player is promoted to the single A league, then up to the double A league, and finally to the triple A league, which is one step away from the major league. Well, you can pick it in. Come on, baby. In Clearwater, the 40 best players in the organization will vie for a spot on the big league roster. That's all right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. The manager of the Phillies is Danny Ozark. His role differs from that of Bob Wren. How about Robbie? Instead of instructing, Ozark encourages, promoting a relaxed atmosphere in which experienced players can reach full potential. Not too bad. You slide on both cheeks. Whoops. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, 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 that boy. Well, well, hey. well, as soon as one of you guys faint, I'll take over. Right. Get a hold of that ball, stump finger. We got those good hands, you got them all the time. <laughs> stump fingers. <laughs> First observers of spring's new crop are the old fans from Florida's retirement community. They study each player carefully and take great pride in the discovery of future stars. He comes from South Carolina. Thurston Thomason. Yeah, he's, he pitched for Reading last year. Have you seen him? Yeah, I don't know if he's down. I've heard Boy, of him. I am telling you, he's the best prospect we got. Is that right? You think? I think in, as far as pitchers go. Thomason is a pitcher for Reading last year. And they were just about a game or two out of first place, and he won two or three ball games right in the clutch, you know? Put him right in the, for the championship. He's, he's my choice of the sleeper in the whole camp. Five years ago, Erskine Thomason began his baseball career in Pulaski. Now he's in his first big league camp under the watchful eye of Phillies pitching coach good, Ray right? Ripplemeyer. I haven't had the opportunity to see you pitch much, so I'm kind of looking. I, I see some things that cause you to throw high once in a while. Yeah. The curveball and slider, the one secret of throwing them is when you pop it, you pop it and pop it hard but you don't try to get your muscle and your body behind that pitch like, like you do doing a fastball. It's all right there at the end. You give it all the pop you possibly got. That's super. And, you know, he's, he's got a good slider, too. He's throwing good now. He's throwing, you know, easy. Just keep it a little compact and just think about not how hard you're going to throw, but more where exactly I'm going to get the ball. Throw. And look, because you're throwing the ball super, so yeah. you don't have to try to be getting that extra line. Yeah, it's a matter to me what I, what little I've seen of him. He has all, all the pitches, and it's a matter of if he can do it under the big league pressure. After five seasons in the Bush League, Erskine is now living first class and able to look back on what it took to get this far. Well, I mean, the minor leagues are tough. You, you always hear that it's the seller. It is. It's, 
you got bus rides, you got to put up with bad conditions, bad clubhouses, bad lighting on the field. It's just rough. It's a long road to hoe, and I've been from the rookie league to double-A ball, and I've seen every kind of condition there is. The minor leagues are tough. I've got a college education. I guess if I hadn't moved up a notch every year, I would have already given it up. But each year I've gone up one class ball, and it makes me want to come back the next year. So I guess when I start going the other way, that's when I'm going to give it up. essence of Major League Baseball is the battle between the hitter and the pitcher. The pitcher will deliver the ball at nearly 100 miles per hour. The batter has less than half a second to react. The others can only wait, watch, and be ready. Maggio once said that true pitching skills are instinctive and cannot be taught. But Dizzy Dean attributed his great success as a pitcher to clean living and a fast outfield. Fire that Erskine. Let's go, Erskine, baby. Fire to me. Home to me, babe. Home in here, baby. Fire to me. A pitcher's pleasure is a momentary on, thing. Come on now. Because one swing of the bat can destroy an entire day's work. It's a typical spring training. I'm off to a terrible start again. Last three springs, I ain't done nothing. I couldn't get a tag on rookie league team out. I was watching yesterday. Your ball never gets up above here, ever hardly. If I could do that, I'd be, I'd be so sweet. Just stay right down, from right there down. Everything I'm throwing from right here to right here, breaking pitch, everything, fastball. Yeah, you might get in some trouble then. Definitely. Just like Dallas said, you know, he said the difference between you. You know, making the big leagues and pitching in double-A, triple-A is fastballs that much, you know, up. Yeah. And I said, oh, ain't no way. No kidding. And that first day I got out there and I was, I was throwing hard, and I was right here, <laughs> no problem. They're just sticking right there. They don't care how hard you throw the ball. No. Hey, I see your girlfriend Gina came down to visit. I saw her out by the pool. She got burnt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she, she got burnt. She was hurting, really. she come out to any of the games? came Sunday, the day I got bombed. She didn't come back. <laughs> How long did you lay out in the sun? <laughs> in the pool. She whiz. Never been to Florida, and you don't know how to. I told you you were going to get burnt. <laughs> I, t I told you not to stay out in the sun. It's pretty, isn't it? I love Florida. You know, we talked about getting married this summer, but. I don't think it's going to be possible if I go to Philadelphia. You know, it's just, I'm going to have too much pressure on me to do good there and to prove to them I can, you know, pitch in the big leagues. Yesterday they cut 10 or 15 guys, and yet here, you know, I'm still here. I'm still on the borderline whether I'm going to make the club or whether I'm going to get sent out again. So, really, it's just going to be in the next two weeks. All the decisions are going to be made as far as whether I'm going to make it or not. If I can throw good, I can make the club. I know that. I got to impress somebody. 
I'm not trying to impress you. I'm trying to impress the front office. Fading spring leaves behind many shattered hopes. Through eight weeks, each player has been studied, charted, analyzed, and evaluated. Some will be judged too young, others too old. Of the original 40, only 25 will go north with the big team. For Eskin Thomason, euphoria gives way to hard facts. Time is running out and storm clouds are gathering. Erskine travels to Sarasota, Florida, prepared for one last shot at making the roster. But the signs are not encouraging. Yeah. Despite a continuing drizzle, the game begins. Erskine goes out to battle the elements and the Chicago White Sox for his spot in the bright light. Come on, Erskine, come on out. Come on, Erskine, come on out. Come on, it. High fastball. All right, come on out. All right, Erskine, good pitcher now. Get the hitter. Oh, catch that ball. Can't do it. Oh. oh. These walks just to kill you. They'll just kill you. Jeez. I'd, I'd trade a base hit for a walk any day of the week. I mean, I'll give a base hit to a guy happily. So I got a chance to get him out. Lay it right down in there and say, here, hit it. For Erskine Thomason, the happy rhythms of spring had ground to a halt. Yeah. part of my job is talking to you younger pitchers about what we got planned for you and so forth and I think for your own benefit Ersk that uh, because of the pitching that we have right now that we're going to send you out I'm going to send you out to Toledo okay all right I'll be, I'll be. Oh, now, no no you're you're not uh, don't get down to yourself uh, I know you feel bad and I feel as bad as you do because I have to do this thing it, it probably hurts me more than it hurts you uh, here, I think you were pressing because I think you can pitch better than you've shown. What we're looking forward to is that you pitch here. I'm looking forward to pitch here. I think you've got the ability, you've got the stuff. Uh, if one of my guys should get hurt here, Toledo is only a couple hundred miles away from Philadelphia, and I made kind of a, a little bet with everybody that before a month or a month and a half of the season that you're going to be back with me. Okay. Okay. I won't, I won't get down. Okay. Look it out. A new season opens in Philadelphia with a flurry of drums and over 50,000 expectant fans. Here is this afternoon's starting lineup for the Philadelphia Phillies. Number 22, Michael Harris. Number 23. 500 miles to the west, another team opens its season. <laughs> Ohio. 
Ohio, home of the Mud Hens, AAA farm team of the Philadelphia Phillies. <laughs> Triple A is baseball's tobacco road. Theoretically, it is only one step away from the major leagues. But in reality, the gulf is much greater. One is major, the other minor. The mere words say it all. Erskine Thomason's task is twofold, mental as well as physical. Forget his disappointment and pitch his way back. His judge and jury will be Toledo manager Jim Bunny, a former pitching great in both the American and National Leagues. Bunning sets the same high standards for his players that he once held for himself. Few pitchers find his silent scrutiny easy to bear. that the International League was no easy touch and Bunning offered his first critique. High sliders. I'm tired of looking at them. One of them night, Erskine. The future, which had seemed so promising only six weeks before, is now clouded with doubt. For the first time in Erskine's career, he is slipping in the wrong direction. September, the Mud Hens will play 124 games without a day off. Half their life is spent on the road in a cramped bus. For 34 men, this is home. A combination bedroom, game room, and cafeteria. Chicken. Hey, we got some greasy chicken. What we got? Now, banana. Now it's my turn. Any donuts? Look at this, we got gravy. Hey, a cookie. Cookie the chicken. Cheeseburger. Hey, I got a breast. Anybody want to trade a breast for a wing? <laughs> Ride all night. The bottles. Hello? Six hours by bus. Last one we rode all night. Eight and a half hours. Got in at what? 8.30. Got a couple hours sleep and go to the ballpark. I think the older you get, the worse you feel. You know, the day after, it lingers on. Not that I'm old or anything like that, but I, I found out that it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 26 about four days ago. Well, baseball ages you, though. It's, uh, it's, it's a tough life. But I've been in strict bus leagues all my life. Everywhere I go, I bus it. All night long. Good old Get on grease. No, I love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> Don't know how to live with good food, man. In the minor leagues, it's, uh, it's how they go. Booze, bras, and bad breasts. But in the big leagues, it's wine, woman, and wow. <laughs> I feel like the fugitive right now. I'm on this, you know, looking out. You know, remember the fugitive? You know, people riding on a train, yeah. looking out, waiting for the bus to collapse and break down so I can get free to go home. Despite constant reminders of the goal, Erskine Thomason has fallen prey to triple A depression. Somehow, his best pitch, the slider has deserted him. Even though Gina Spence comes to Toledo to offer moral support, Erskine's carefully knit world has begun to unravel. In his first eight starts as a mud hen, he loses seven games. The most important part of any mud hen day comes after the game is over. Jim Bunning must fill out a report on each player's performance. Later, he will phone the reports back to Philadelphia to be tape recorded by the front office and become a permanent part of the player's record. This is Jim Bunning, Toledo. Date of game, May 26th. Attendance, 325. Pitching summary, Thomason, the losing pitcher. Five and a third innings pitch. Nine hits, five runs, four earned runs. 
three walks, two intentional, two strikeouts. Total pitches, 105. Remarks on the pitchers. Thomason, can't get it going. High in the strike zone with all three pitches. Too many mistakes to pitch successfully at this level. <laughs> In the Bush League, there is a comradeship of faded green. The Mud Hens escape reality for the moment with a team bachelor party. Erskine can no longer face the frustration of Toledo alone. Tomorrow, he will attempt to change his course by marrying Gina. By this time tomorrow, you're going to be a wealthy married man. Dearly beloved, we are assembled here in the presence of God to join this man and woman in holy marriage. Erskine, wilt thou have this woman to be thy wife, to live with her and cherish her according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? I will. Will you join your right hands, please? Erskine, will you repeat after me? I, Erskine, take thee, Regina. I, Erskine, take thee, Regina. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. <laughs> All right, the biggest. <laughs> oh, Lord and mercy. So you guys at the ballpark. They'll be at the ballpark in a couple hours. <laughs> oh, Lord. I can't believe it. I'm glad we did it so like weird. this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, well, now I got to go to the ballpark tonight, and then we, uh, Go on a 14 day road trip well, in three days. <laughs> but first, I got to sit down with Bunning and find out what's happened to my slider. Well, I think the, the, the thing we've got to remember is that even though you're struggling with your slider, you must use it. Yeah. Every time you go out there, you've got to have it. Right. To be successful at this level and to be successful in the major leagues, you've got to have a slider. You've got to have a good grip on the slider because you want to pop it when you get it out here. Start, get, get more of the ball here. Get, get on the side of the ball. Get a grip on it. Get a grip on it. Choke it a little. Even if it feels uncomfortable, I just want to get some spin. You're going to have a little better command of it, and you're going to spin the ball better. See, now that ball, that ball is spinning a lot quicker and a lot tighter. That much. That's all. You're not going to ever get hurt with that pitch. That's a good fast ball that moved. That's what a slider is. Doesn't that feel better than the other way? You've got to spin that damn ball to make it break. That's it. on the pitcher. Thomason, best effort yet. Fastball down and slider much better. Tomorrow's pitcher, Alan Santorini.
got my key. <laughs> Guess what? I just got a call from Bunny, and he said I'm going to the big leagues tomorrow. Can you believe it? It's Philadelphia Phillies baseball time. Harry Callis and Rich Ashburn at Veterans Stadium, where tonight the Phillies take on the Houston Astros. just a matter of work and, and maturity and, and doing the job, you know. A lot of these kids, Erskine Thomas, Mike Anderson. I had Mike Anderson in his first first year in 1969, Pulaski, and, and uh, a lot of these kids have come up come up the same way you have. And, what? And, uh, you got to work at it. Well, right? you got you got two left-handers going tomorrow, Carlton and Gullet, that, that could well, we could put Saucier up there one of these days, maybe. To Kevin Saucier, playing in the big leagues is still something to dream about. But for Erskine Thomason, it has become a reality. Like the 10 other pitchers in the Philadelphia bullpen, he awaits a phone call from the dugout to send him into action. Until then, he sits and waits at every game, a uniform spectator in the shadows of the bright light. Oh, the Cubs lead it now by a score of 9-1. to one. And it has not been the Phillies' night, Rich. This is a night, Harry, you want to get the married men off the field. The pitchers, uh, Phillies pitchers are really getting bombed tonight. I don't even know who Danny has left out there. CB, I uh, get uh, Erskine up. Thomason, uh, have him ready to pitch to Jones. Hey, Erskine, get ready as soon as you can. He might want you to pitch to Jones. will be bringing in a new pitcher here in the ninth inning and Rich Hewitt. Well, I'm not sure who it was. Um, we'll have to wait and see after he jumps out of that card. It's Erskine Thomason, Harry. Erskine Thomason just called up from Toledo where he won seven and lost 14, and this will be his big league debut. Erskine has bounced around the minor leagues uh, quite a while. He has a sinker ball, a slider. He's not an overpowering type pitcher. This is not a very crucial situation for any pitcher, Harry. The game is really out of hand, and uh, this is kind of a mop-up job for Erskine, but it is his first major league appearance, and I imagine it's something uh, that's pretty important to him. Pete Lecoq leading off. Lecoq has had two hits and three at bats, one a double. Pete Lecoq's father, Harry, is Peter Marshall on Hollywood Squares. Yes, he is. He does a fine job. Erskine Thomason set to go. Wind up. And the first pitch on the way to Pete Lecoq. 
Here's a well-hit ball into deep right field. Anderson going away, way back. Leaps up, and a great catch by Anderson. Crashes into the fence and holds on to the baseball. Fine play by Anderson. Hurst can hung a slider to LeCocq. Uh, LeCocq doesn't like breaking pitches, but he didn't have much trouble with that one. And uh, a great play by Mike Anderson. I don't think anybody's going to appreciate it more than Erskine Thomason. He got away with a bad pitch. Erskine was married this summer. He married the former Gina Spence, who is in attendance tonight for Erskine's Major League debut. Next pitch on the way and a swing and a ground ball hit toward Cash. Dave is going to have to hurry. The throw to first and Cardinal is out at first base on a very close play. Good play by Dave Cash. Two down. That's going to bring up the pitcher Bert Hooten. So Thomason has two out. Nobody on base. Ninth inning. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Thomason puts down the Cubs 1-2-3. No hits, no runs, no Philly errors, and none left. And at the end of eight and a half, the score Cubs 9 and Phils 1. Well, the game a little out of hand, of course, but it is uh, Erskine Thomason's major leg debut, and I guess it's an inning that he'll never forget. With eight pitches, Erskine Thomason has earned the line in the official record book of Major League Baseball. Erskine never returned to the bright lights. And now he's back in the bushes. A 27-year-old relief pitcher for the Toledo Mutt Hens. 